Alright, so I want to talk about World of Goo, but before I get too far ahead of myself, you may be wondering, what the heck even is a World of Goo? So, if you don't already know, World of Goo is a video game for the Wii, Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, iOS, Nintendo Switch, and Linux by 2D Boy, an independent game developer. Yeah, I'm just reading off the wiki at this point. Honestly, World of Goo is such a simple yet complex game that it's kind of hard to explain. World of Goo is a physics-based puzzle game. I like to personally describe World of Goo as a gimmicky bridge builder game, and I don't mean gimmicky in a bad way at all. I call this game a bridge builder because for the most part you are trying to build some sort of structure to get from point A to B, similar to how like Polybridge would play. Except in World of Goo you are not limited by a budget for a level, but rather how much goo balls you have. Also, your structure is not going to be as rigid as it is in other bridge builders. There is almost a sense of an organic feeling to the structures. Which makes sense, you build these structures out of goo balls which are alive, and it is good that the structure feels fluid and not so stiff like it was made out of wood or concrete. All of this adds a unique and fun feeling to the game when it comes to gameplay that really sets it apart from other bridge builders and puzzle games. So, you may be asking yourself, what the heck even is a goo ball? You may also be asking, haven't you already used this transition once not even that long ago? Yes. Yes I have. Goo balls are an alien species that were found on a distant planet. I think. I'm like 83% sure on that. Anyways, the world of Goo Corporation, pretty on the nose there, found a way to use the native goo balls for their product manufacturing. And apparently goo balls are most primarily used for making energy drinks. Yeah, you know that Red Bull or that Bang Energy or Monster? Yeah, goo. All goo. Nothing but goo. But besides using the local populace of Goo Ball to make energy drinks, the world of Goo Corporation serves to be the antagonist of the game. The game has four main sections that are labeled as chapters. Each of these chapters has a small amount of levels that you get to complete before you reach the next one. This is how the story is presented. The first chapter is about how all the Goo Balls are suddenly awakening from their sleep due to the sudden new pipes that are showing up around the world. The Goo Balls navigate to these pipes and then are sent off to the world of Goo Corporation. But chapter 2 is where the game truly starts to show how weird it is and starts to dump more of exposition and lore into its levels. This chapter takes you through a bleak desert with signs of a forgotten and lost power source that the world used to use. Turns out that at the end of chapter 2 the power source is beauty. Yeah, just kinda go with it. I think beauty is not subjective in this sense but rather an actual substance. I'm honestly not that sure. This is all given to you with hint signs and short vague cutscenes throughout the game. I'm just kind of praying this wiki and my conclusions after playing the game are somewhat correct. Anyways, moving on to chapter 3. You are at a massive factory and working your way up to the World of Goo Corporation's massive product reveal. What's the product being revealed? You'll just have to wait and see at the end of the chapter. Ah, it's a third dimension. Yeah, the World of Goo Corporation just casually invents 3D. With the launch of their appropriately named product Z, get it? Because the third dimension was added, meaning that there's now a Z-axis? Because in math, the third dimension is typically denoted as the Z-axis? Look, I know there's gotta be at least one math nerd out there who's gonna appreciate this. Anyways, with the launch of product Z, the world has now been turned three-dimensional, and it's off to the final chapter of the game, Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is where we get to cross the information superhighway, aka the internet. Truly the most terrifying setting for a final world in any video game. Thankfully the world of Goo Corporation is stuck way too long ago in the past and it is nothing more than a basic vector graphics simulating reality. Okay, maybe it's not that simple, but at least there's none of those ads telling me women are specifically close to my current location. Or maybe that is a bad thing. Anyways, now that we have gone into the digital landscape of the information superhighway, we are trying to make it to all uppercase MOM, which is an artificial intelligence within the computer. I don't know if this name is supposed to be a reference to a motherboard of a computer, or if it means anything else, since the wiki is leaving me a bit hanging in this regard, and I wasn't really paying enough attention during this to pick up on if it means anything, so uh, yeah, just go with it. Upon encountering MOM at the end of chapter 4, you will figure out that the best way to defeat the World of Goo Corporation is to spam their inboxes with tons of emails, since apparently there aren't enough people already overwhelming their inbox with angry emails after they invented a whole new dimension of reality. So after coming up with this foolproof plan, you will make your way to the recycling bin and, I'm not kidding, undelete all of the spam emails sending literally every spam message in the existence of the world to the Goo Corporation. 
Now with the corporation completely blown up and done for, not joking, the world goes back to normal. Except how does sending spam email really get rid of a newly added third dimension? The world may never know. Now there is an epilogue chapter, but this has nothing to do with the story, at least the main story. Additionally, there was another chapter planned at some point that was going to take place on the moon or in space, but was eventually scrapped to keep the price of the game from rising, which I can respect. So, World of Goo was originally released back in 2008 for the PC and WiiWare services, with later editions of the game releasing afterwards. I remember playing the game originally on the Wii back when I was a kid, and I think a lot of people's experience with the game will be very similar. When I had played through this game recently, I had bought it on Steam and played on my PC, which is a much better way to play the game. But having the game release on the Wii alongside the PC was genius. The Wii pointer controls worked surprisingly well for the gameplay and was a fun use of that technology at the time. Plus, in 2008, releasing something on the Wii, even if it was just for a WiiWare service, gave your game much more exposure than if it was just a PC exclusive. For the longest time, I actually had no idea World of Goo was available outside of the Wii. I was convinced that it was some sort of exclusive that the console had. PC gaming was just not as prevalent back in 2008 as it is today. And by dual releasing for the WiiWare service and PC, the game was very successful. Just with the Wii alone, the game sold around 320 copies, making it one of the top-selling WiiWare games, I believe. In terms of digital game sale numbers for the Wii, it is really only beat out by big classic Nintendo games like Super Mario Bros. 3 and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. But, at the same time, surprisingly, World of Goo outsold games like Super Mario 64 and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which just blows my mind. Another very important thing to note about this game's release is that I would consider this game to be a pioneer of the indie game genre. This was a game that was releasing around the same time that Cave Story, Super Meat Boy, and Pez were releasing. And this was a time before it was very common to see much indie games at all. And I feel that World of Goo just does not get enough credit for this. So yeah, World of Goo is definitely a more unique game to look at. But how does all of it still hold up today? Well, pretty good I would say. I played through the entire game completing every single level without skipping, and besides being a lot easier than I remember, I feel that I enjoyed this game just as much as I did playing it way back in the Wii when I was a kid. I will say that the game does feel pretty short and that it doesn't really feel like it's worth $15 on Steam, but hey, you could spend your money on worse things. But besides that, I have very few complaints. Every level feels completely unique and it never feels like they're overusing one idea or gimmick. The game is fairly easy, and I could typically beat the majority of levels in one try with very little thought, but there are a couple of levels here and there that took a few tries, especially if I wanted to have a bunch of extra goo balls left over in the end. There are optional tasks to increase the difficulty called OCD flags. These are typically to beat a stage under a certain amount of time, or to use only so much goo balls. They are honestly pretty difficult in some stages. Where the real difficulty of the game comes in is the epilogue. A set of three levels and then a final level in the game. This is going to be the penultimate challenge of World of Goo. All of your skills and puzzle solving up to this point will be tested. These still aren't crazy hard, but if you are looking for a challenge, then these levels are for you. Shame it's only three of them. The final level of the game is extremely easy because all you have to do is attach a bunch of balloons to a massive telescope and lift it into the air. And then the credits roll. So while gameplay is simple, there are little things to change it up from time to time. Like the different species of goo balls. There's of course the black standard goo ball, but then there are white goo balls that act kind of like string or webbing. There are balloons that can lift your structures up. Massive goo balls that you have to break down to get them into their appropriately colored pipes. Match goo balls that catch fire. And my personal favorite, the green goo ball, which can be used to build like normal, but their placement is not permanent and they can be moved around and used over and over. There are more goo balls in the game, but I'm getting tired of saying goo balls, so let's just move on. One last big part of the game that I haven't really mentioned yet is the World of Goo Corporation as a location. When you beat a level, you usually have to get a certain amount of goo balls to the pipe, and any extra goo balls you have left over will be collected and sent to the World of Goo Corporation. Here, you can use the extra goo balls to try and build a tower or structure as high as possible in any way you can. I remember playing this a lot as a kid because having hundreds of goo balls at your disposal to do just whatever you want is just so fun to see what you can come up with. I really enjoyed my time playing this game. It is quick enough to get through, levels are unique and varied, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. And it's very satisfying to solve all the puzzles, especially the ones that maybe take a little bit to figure out. And oddly enough, the humor is really good in this game. 
It is weirdly funny at times and it always caught me off guard when I found something funny. World of Goo is also very reminiscent of smaller games that released at that time, and honestly that scratched a very particular nostalgic itch for me that I honestly didn't even know I had. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but World of Goo reminds me of the Flash games that you would play on your computer back in the day, just with more polish and content to it. Overall, a very simple and nostalgic game that I would probably come back to sometime. If you ever played this growing up, I would recommend putting it on a Steam wishlist and trying to catch it on sale sometime to revisit. If you have never played this game before, I feel like there's better puzzle games or bridge builders out there for you. I think that the nostalgic factor of this game really gives it what makes it worth playing anymore today. So uh, yeah, I don't really have a way to end this, so I'm just gonna say that I hope you have a good rest of your day. <laughs> uh.